Hi there. Well, um, I thought I'd given up on off-centre turning project work, uh, but the Axminster to Tuesday Turners group that I host uh, on Zoom, funnily enough, on Tuesdays, um, I've set them a challenge to do some offset turning, and a few of them are having difficulties with the goblet idea. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, try a simpler idea, or well, it might be simpler, um, with a little bowl blank. I've just drawn on, um, segmented the the base in uh, 120 degrees, so it's three equal places, and I've just marked on 35 millimeter diameter um, circles, which is the diameter of the uh, small O'Donnell in expansion mode. So I'm going to drill these now out on the uh, bench press with the 35 mil carbide cutter that I've got, which makes a perfect um, fit. Uh, and I'm going to draw, drill four holes out so that it allows me to grip this little scrap of uh, sycamore, I think. I don't know, it's a bit wormy. Uh, in those four different ways and see what sort of little bowl shapes I can get out of it. It might be a bit safer than some of the other alternatives. <laughs> it might not, <laughs> we'll find out. So I've just set the bowl blank up in the Bosch um, bench press and using the Thompson carbide cutter, I'm just gonna go around and drill the four holes to a depth of about five mil, which is what you need for the um, small O'Donnell jaws. Okay, so I have now drilled uh, four holes in. It looks like Mickey Mouse or something. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try and repeat on the other side. So uh, I guess I'll try and grip it in the first one to start with. So first off, just true up the face and true up the edges. Uh, the piece of wood is distinctly wormy and scrappy, so this is not going to be a very fine piece, I don't think. So now it's kind of roughed out. You can really see the wormholes there. It's awful. Okay then, so now just putting it on number one, off-centre and start to turn the first little bowl. So, of course, being very careful of the fingers, as you can see, there's quite a lot of wood whirling around. Just starting to cut out with the 3 8 bowl gouge, and then just briefly marked on approximately where the bowl is going to be in size, so I've got something to aim at, and don't go through the outside wall, because you can't really see where the outside wall is when it's whirring around like this. Uh, it's just a bit of regular bowl turning. Uh, it's just a small bowl. Uh, still got to be careful with bevel control, making sure that you don't skid as you start the cut. Uh, the 3 8 bowl gouge is a little big for the uh, hole, so I might swap over perhaps to a spindle gouge now. I've worked out what the depth needs to be, uh, and... Uh, I want to make sure I don't go through the bottom because the bowls have got to allow for the fact that there's a mortise uh, recessed in the bottom. So I've allowed for 5mm depth for the mortise and 5mm thickness for the base uh, and set the depth gauge accordingly. Don't ask me why, I know it's quite important to check the depth regularly. Uh, it could be because I've gone through the bottom in the past but we don't talk about that do we? I'm doing a mixture of uh, push cuts where I can ride the bevel safely down towards the bottom and pull cuts where the bevel would otherwise be pushing me off the wood. Uh, it's about a 40 degree grind on the spindle gouge so you can't really get around the corner uh, with a push cut from the top. But a pull cut from the bottom outwards 
is perfectly fine. You just need to watch that wing. So once I've got it uh, reasonably well shaped to depth within about a quarter of a millimeter, I'm just swapping now to a negative rake um, scraper and they perform very well, produce some good shavings and uh, gets a good finish on the bottom. It's a bit manky this wood so it's bouncing off the wormholes. It really is almost scrap but as I've started I'm going to finish. The scraper really does produce such a good finish that it only needed a little bit of sanding uh, with um, hand sanding and a power sander just to dress it off. And then time to move it to the next off centre chucking point and repeat the whole process. Remembering again to mark out the diameter of the bowl to match the diameter that's already been turned uh, to make sure that all three of them are the same diameter. So a super fast run through for the next bowl because it's the same process as the first one. I chose to use a quarter inch um, bowl gouge for this one which was a little easier um, and then straight on to the negative rake scraper when I got the depth right. Then skip through to the third bowl which was the same as the second. So I've got three bowls done. Uh, I'll now take it off and reset it on here with number one jaw being there. Two. Just going to dress the face, I think. Now, do I take out that centre? Or do I not? I don't know yet. I'll, I think I'll shape the outside first and then see what I think. Not sure yet. So I've gone for a straight profile on the outside uh, with just a little bead near the rim. And now back to the main face. I've decided that I think I will put the extra uh, bowl in the middle and join them all up with one uh, that's the same size. Need to be a bit more careful with the uh, bevel again because you're going to hit those edges of the previous bowls and make sure that you don't get a catch otherwise you're going to chunk flying out. So push and pull cuts as usual, just being careful with the spindle gouge. Check the depth and then when it's right, go in with the um, negative rake scraper just to finish it off. Managed to get some nice sharp edges. The wood is atrocious though, full of worm. So I decided that it's going to have to be textured and put some details in and possibly some colouring. Otherwise it'll just look horrible. It'll probably look horrible anyway, uh, but we'll give it a go. Well, I'd better do something on the outside to balance it up as well. So three little cut marks there uh, just to uh, reflect what I'm doing on the other side. And then a quick tidy up, bit of sanding and use the uh, brass brush as the wormholes are absolutely chock-a-block full of dust. Well, it looks even worse with the wormhole uh, cleared out. So I'm going to now spray it all up, sand it sealer first and then uh, ebonize it and I'm going to texture it with the Dremel as well. In order to make it easier for me to actually put some manufactured holes in here without actually taking it off the lathe, off the chuck rather, um, I'm going to use the Simon Hope um, wood carver's jig that I've got here. And then I've got the Axminster version of the Dremel with the flexi arm and the dentist's uh, burr in there. I actually got it from the dentist just before he retired. He gave me a few 
Uh, and I'm just going to go bibbly bobbly all over it and create some pseudo wormholes. That's it. You can see it there now. Uh, it's just like a random mess of pattern. Uh, I'm going to do some colouring in it and that will hopefully go into it. I just want to disguise some of the uh, the wood um, holes just a bit more. I can just And then, of course, uh, some on the outside. Um, just allowing the drill uh, to move very gently in my hand so that it sort of skitters across the surface so it doesn't drill in deeply. It just produces a sort of scattery effect. Now, because I've got the base colour showing through here, uh, I want to get some uh, colour into that um, bottom and then afterwards do maybe some interference colours on the top. I'll have to see how that works out. Right, I've actually decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the oh that's burning out, sorry. Uh, some of the Hampshire Sheen intrinsic colours to dye the colour in the base and then I'll put some um, interference paints on the top. So I'm just going to get some onto a sponge and work that in to some of the areas. This is um, honey. Flame, I think. In some of the areas, just to little dots of burnt orange on. Don't know why, just because I can be slightly darker in some areas. Right, I'm just going to lightly abrade the surface uh, just to remove any dye that's actually like stuck to the surface of the paint because uh, it might cause it to debond, I don't know. Possibly not, but it never does any harm. Right, I got some Joe Sonia ones out. Uh, just to have a look at. Um, Just a very small amount to start with of blue iridescent. I'm reusing the same damp sponge that I got before, which I've rinsed out. So I had to die on. So after the blue, I've put some uh, turquoise iridescent on and also some red, just to keep on going, basically. Okay. It's something. I don't know what it is, but it's something. All right. I'm going to put some electric blue embellishing wax in. And see if that will just brine it out a little bit. I decided just before I put the wax on that I would cut out some of the grooves uh, that were black and highlight them as wood. And I thought I was going to leave it like that, but it, it looks horrible anyway. So I thought, no, I'll, um, I didn't like that. So I thought that's why I put the wax in. So I buff the wax back and then let it dry uh, for a couple of hours. 
and because the wax felt like it was a fairly soft surface I wanted to seal it so this is an experiment with me using Zinza seal coat which is a shellac based product and I'm advised was well, de-waxed shellac based product and I am advised that you can put shellac over wax and it won't bubble and dissolve it. I guess I'll find out whether the shellac does that or not uh, in time. It'd be a good test piece. So I've taken it off the jaws now and it looks okay. It's a bit overly shiny. Not one of my best pieces. Anyway, I've now got the bottom to sort out and I've got this interesting accidental shaping of three little feet. So I think I'm going to whack that in the bottom jaws, get the Dremel out and the sander and shape those into three little feet and make a bit of a feature of them. There's a lot of wormholes in the bottom, so I'm just going to try and do a little bit of texture to see if I can actually mask that a bit. And then finish the bottom off with a bit of Zinza seal coat to match the rest. So there we have it. Not sure it was worthwhile finishing all the colour and texture off, but it's all good practice, isn't it? I think it probably should have gone in the bin, but I hate chucking pieces away. And somebody will love it somewhere. Maybe. Maybe not.